Namaste. So now we're going to talk about the three treasures of Qigong. And these are uh, Shen, Qi, and Jing. Jing means sexual fluids. And the sexual fluids are generated at the base of the spine by the gonads. And they provide the basic uh, energy, the fuel, in combination with the original qi, which is, uh, according to some authorities, is stored in the kidneys. And in other authorities say it's stored in the dantian. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> because original chi is unalterable. However, the chi generated by the jing, the sexual fluids, can be uh, manipulated by different practices. What is that? Well, Wilhelm Reich talked about sex economics. And what he meant is that there's only a certain amount of sex energy or sexual fluids uh, endocrine secretions and so on related to sexual function uh, within a certain time period, you know, like every day. <clears throat> it's a limited supply of energy. So just like in ordinary economics, you have a supply like an income, then you have to budget it intelligently huh? or you can go broke. So in the same way, we have a a certain amount of sexual energy being generated every day. Huh? And that can either enhance or conflict with the original chi, depending on whether it's in balance and if it's the right flavor and so on and so forth. Uh, the idea is in Qigong to uh, allow the sex energy to develop to the point where it becomes clear how to interface with original chi. And then that allows you to, to cook the chi. Uh -huh. And what happens then is that you increase the amount of chi available to the whole system. So this is done through various practices, including exercises, breathing, and tantric type practices that involve a direct manipulation of the sexual organs by partners. And this can be done with either different sex or same sex partners, doesn't matter. What matters is to balance the chi. Okay, so all these practices we're going to cover in a later series. Right now we're going to talk about then what happens if you cook the chi properly. Well, you get shen. Shen means like spirit. Spirit in the sense of consciousness, beingness. Uh, remember, where we are with Qigong is karma yoga, the, the Dvaita Vada level, ontological level of the path, right? This is for everybody. This is universal for all human beings. Therefore, it has to be begin with the body and be focused on the body. <clears throat> so that everybody can have access to it. It does not require any intellectual adjustment. It's all very practical down to earth. You know, do this, do that, right? There is just certain basic, few basic concepts to understand. Shen means consciousness. Consciousness of what? Well, consciousness of the body and senses and mind. So the condition of the body and the mind are very important to developing good shen. We want high shen, high spirit, huh? good spirit, good vibrations, you know, positive energy, right? How do we get that? Well, one way is by eliminating the negative, and the other is by uh, cooking the chi to the point where rat rises naturally. When this happens, this is the blooming of the, of the secret golden flower uh, that we talked about in the other series, Secret of the Golden Flower. This is the blossoming of that flower. Okay? You, you don't get a flower to blossom by pushing it in any way. 
anything you do to try to force the flower to bloom is only going to destroy it. So this is why artificial methods don't work. This is why intellectual impositions and so on don't work, okay? They are an overlay on the reality, okay? And the reality means openaika, <laughs> ehi pasiko. Remember from the other series on Buddhism, Buddha's teaching? It means it's open, open for inspection, visible in the here and now, and subject to verification. So you can observe your own self by doing the practices and see these phenomena happening in real time. Okay, that's what the quality of all of Buddha's teaching is. And Qigong certainly fits into that uh, measure. Uh, that you can do these exercises, you can do these processes, you can adopt these views, which are actually very few. And <clears throat> this will like open up a door into a way of being that is <laughs> subjectively anyway, you know, I, I can't speak for what other people perceive, but subjectively to me, it seems like a, a much more pleasant and, and ecstatic way to live. So when you do these practices, <clears throat> okay, you take the jing that you're given and then by exercises and so on, you develop the qi, right? And you cook the jing with the fire of the original qi. And this is called the, the triple warmer or the, or the, the, the ting, huh? the, cup, the cooker. In China, they have these cookers, you know, that, that sit on legs over a fire. And you can cook a whole meal in them. Some of them have even like three or four levels. Really cool. Anyway, this is the ting. And the ting is also a sacrificial vessel which is offered to the god. Uh -huh. So just like the uh, kundalini, the sexual life force energy, is said to reside in the fire pit, uh, Agni Kund, at the base of the spine. When she uncoils her three and a half coils <coughs> and ascends to the Sahasra Chakra, uh, it always happens naturally. It never happens because of anything we do. Okay, what we can do is to clear the way, to get all the junk out of the way. See, and that means, you know, like getting rid of ego and the desires and all that. Kind of, that's the higher part of the path. But you see, that part of the path happens spontaneously when there's sufficient energy to support it. You don't have to push, you don't have to do anything, really, except sit and watch it. <laughs> And it may happen slowly, but usually it happens fairly quickly within a matter of weeks. That's why all of the Qigong classics, including the Secret of the Golden Flower, mention a training of a hundred days. Training of a hundred days, a little over three months, a quarter. Huh? Can you spare a quarter, a single quarter out of your life to achieve perfection? You know, that's, that's what we're offering here. This is the promise. This is the uh, value of this Qigong process that it sets you up. It's not the final goal. No, no, it's just the foundation. But it sets you up for the higher levels of the path to happen spontaneously and naturally instead of by force. See, I see people here I live in a place of pilgrimage where thousands of people come literally every month. Uh, and during the winter months, especially a lot of Westerners come. And I see them, they're in a big hurry. They're trying to change themselves really fast. And they're exercising a lot of uh, force, pushing themselves to imitate certain external practices and standards and so on that they've been shown or taught and basically getting nowhere. <laughs> Why? 
They don't have the base. They don't have the foundation. They don't have the energy to do these extremely difficult jnana yoga processes, raja yoga processes. You just can't do it. Bhakti yoga is barely within their grasp. Huh? And that's okay. <clears throat> because they're at that stage of their development. But what I'm saying is, if they had put little more investment into themselves to prepare properly, they would have a much easier time getting through these things. Because really, you know, the Shakti wants us to be realized. She wants us to understand that we're her Shiva. See? She wants us to understand that we are the master of our own little universe. Now, we are the God of, of this body, of this being, this individual, this person, this self. So how do we manifest that? I mean, how do we actually realize that? It can't just be theory, that would be bullshit. That would be sales talk. <laughs> and we don't like sales talk. No, what we have experienced on this path <clears throat> is that when the energies are balanced and nothing is repressed, uh, so many nice things happen all by themselves. This is like the path of least resistance. You know? Sometimes on the path of least resistance, yeah, you have to push a little. You have to make a little effort. But a little effort regularly over a long span of time accomplishes more than a big effort in a short span of time like we see with the spiritual tourists here. Yeah. It's the tortoise and the hare all over again. <laughs> the tortoise won because the rabbit was so self-confident and, and knows that he can really burn up the track, right? That he goofed off. He went out and started partying and celebrating his victory before it even happened. So he lost the race to the tortoise who was just plodding along day after day doing the practices, you know. <laughs> That's sometimes what you got to do. I, I think I mentioned one time about dummy practicing. When I was in the conservatory and I was learning to play the concert flute, which is a very demanding instrument, I had to basically start all over again from scratch with professional level training. So my teacher was telling me, you know, look, you got to do this. If you can't do it at the normal speed, do it at the half speed. If you can't do it at half speed, do it at a quarter speed. Huh? Slow it down until you can do it. Don't give yourself a bad impression of yourself by playing it too fast and making a mistake. If you hit something that you can't handle, fine. Slow it way down. Then gradually train yourself to do it faster and faster until you got it at the normal speed, you know? So, uh, and I mean, this is, we're talking about like contemporary music, really, really far out music. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's a blues. Anyway, so this kind of ability, huh? To just grab onto something and ride it, you know, even something very strong is one of the key elements, I would say, to success and self-realization. You know, ride them cowboy, yeah! Right? The, the spirit of, uh, of confident adventure, you know, the skilled person who's willing to take a risk for a very big gain. <laughs> okay, so the risk in this is that it's all bullshit and it's horse pucky and it's worthless and you know it doesn't do any better than going down to the gym or whatever you know. <laughs> but the prize, you know, if you, even the booby prize, you know, the booby prize. If you do this process 
you'll get healthier, you'll get stronger, you'll get more intelligent, more persistent, more capable, and so on, in every area of life. That's the booby prize. The real result of this process is that you attain enlightenment, moksha, huh? complete self-realization. Aum Tatsa, Buddha Sharnai.